welcome back to my channel. So I literally just sat here and filmed this entire video and I wasn't recording. So we're taking another crack at it. Um, so this week's video is going to be my 2024 goals and my 24 books that I want to read in 2024. So let's jump on into it and talk about some of the goals that I have for this year. So as far as reading goals, um, my Goodreads reading goal is to read 75 books this year. I brought it up a little bit from the 50 that I had last year. I did read 100 books last year, but I don't want to put my Goodreads goal at 100 and then like not hit it because... Goodreads goals just mess with me, man. I don't know. Even as much as I say, I'm like, mm, I don't care if I don't hit it. It's like, no, you do. You care. That's why we all kind of set it lower than we actually think we're going to read. So I set mine at 75. Upped it a little bit from last year, but not too, too much. So we'll see how that goes. Next, I want to start reading new genres. So I have been branching out. I started reading some sci-fi. Um, I've started getting back into like mysteries and thrillers. But I just want to kind of, I just want to keep doing that. I want to keep branching out. So I'm hoping to read what you'll see in my 24 books I want to read this year. I'm hoping to read just some more sci-fi, some more YI, YI, YA sci-fi. Just kind of dip my toes into some new genres. And then another one is actually to kind of try to read less and spend more quality time with family and friends. So I, this year, um, pretty much reading was like, my number one pri well besides like work obviously after that reading was literally like my number one priority and I just chose reading over everything like if people wanted to hang out I busy reading sorry um and honestly it's because I just love being home I'm a, I'm a homebody I love being home I love reading I like just being in my environment um and i'm just not like super social like i have friends that i like hanging out with but i'm just not i like to be home i like to be in my home i don't know what to tell you guys um but i would like to turn down reading plans turn up social plans just a little bit more not a lot because i do still love to be home and read but I uh, do think that it would benefit me to definitely just try to spend more quality time with people in my life that I love because honestly, you can't go wrong with that. So my final reading goal is I kind of want to redo my reading room and redo my shelving. So currently I have my reading area downstairs in like my living room area where I have the floating shelves. Um, and then I have like a reading room upstairs, which I share with my lizard Castiel. And it's not a mess. You are in it right now. I have like Harry Potter book paper on my walls and la like last year I bought like a couch that like folds out into a futon in case we have guests and I got like a rug and I made it nice and cozy in here I like it in here it's fun and I have like some of my books up here I have my Harry Potter books not to add actual like bookshelves so I kind of want to rearrange and reorganize this room so that way I can kind of add bookshelves and just add some more books up here because even with my book on haul that I did at the end of last year I still have very minimal room on my bookshelves so definitely want to kind of just at some point this year revamp reorganize my shelving situation my last two goals are not necessarily reading goals they're just kind of a life goals so the first one is I want to drink water consistently I just want to be mindful and conscious of the water that I'm drinking um because like last year my entire life truly was just kind of like drinking water whenever I wasn't really thinking anything about it I would have some with you know some of my meals but honestly I just it wasn't like a primary like a conscious effort that I was making um so this year, which I've already technically started, it's middle to the end of January. It's like January 19th, I think, when I'm filming this. So I've already put this goal kind of into action. And I have this Starbucks cup that I got last year, I think. Um, and I absolutely love this cup. So it's 24 ounces. And so I try to drink two of these a day at least if I get three that's great but I try to at least drink two of these and that was one of my goals and then the other one was having a consistent schedule so my life 
last year was kind of hectic. I would be going to bed anywhere between like 10 p.m. and like 2 a.m. Just sporadically, whenever I was tired, even if I wasn't tired, I'd just go to bed. I'd lay in bed on my phone for hours and hours and hours. And that was just driving me insane because I, I didn't want to do it, but it was just like scrolling on your phone and honestly just so addicting. It's ridiculous. And for work the next day, I was just tired and groggy and like miserable all day. And I was waking up like five, 10 minutes before like I had to leave and just hitting snooze, 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 snooze for like 45 minutes. So I was not happy with that. And I was like, you know what? We need a change, Sabrina. We need to live our life, right? Okay. So what I started doing, 9 p.m., I wrap everything up. Nighttime routine stuff, start at nine o'clock, goal, get to bed between 9.20 and 9.30, okay? So it's 9.20, 9.30, I'm laying in bed. I'm allowing myself now to be on my phone until about 9.45. Once it hits 9.45, my phone goes over onto the charger and I do not look at it again until I wake up the next morning. I do allow myself to go on my Kindle if I want to read for like 45 minutes, usually around, I would say like more like half an hour because usually around 10, 15, I shut my Kindle off and put that away as well. And in the beginning it was rough because <laughs> obviously I wasn't very tired because um, I was used to staying up until like all hours of the night. So the first couple nights was rough. I like was just laying there like, oh my God, I just want to pick my phone up. Just, I just want to pick my phone up. I just want to pick my phone up. But no. I wouldn't let myself do it. And eventually it worked. So now I'm like tired by like nine o'clock. I am ready for bed. So sometimes I'm even falling asleep when I'm on my Kindle. So I'm not going to complain about that. And then I wake up at six. I do still hit snooze because I'm only human, but I hit snooze for, I want to say like twice. I'm usually out of bed by like 6, 15, 6, 20. And then I'm downstairs. I have my breakfast, my coffee, do anything that I have to do um, to prep for work and just kind of have some me time in the morning, watch YouTube, read a book, read some of my book, whatever I want to do until I have to get up to get ready for work. So, and it's been working out great. I have like been so much happier in general. I haven't been exhausted during the day. During 2025, during this same video of 2025, I will let you guys know how did my goals go. So let's jump into the 24 books that I want to read in 2024. I'm pretty much just going to be telling you the author and the name of the book because um, genuinely I don't know much of anything about books before I jump into them. So there's no point in me trying to explain First up, we have Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Stormlight Archive series. And I first heard about it from Katie is reading. I've heard really great things. It's high fantasy. Definitely want to kind of jump into the Cosmere. Then we have Six of Crows, which is the first book in the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo. This is in the Grishaverse universe, which comes at, technically after um, Shadow and Bone. But people say you can read this duology without reading Shadow and Bone. And that it's better than Shadow and Bone. So a lot of people don't read Shadow and Bone. So I definitely, I've had this book on my TBR for so long. Um, I think for like two years, honestly, and I own both books. I bought the duology two years ago. Um, but I really, really do want to read them because some people still talk about it to this day when they read it, you know, two, three years ago, how great it is and that it's like their favorite duology, uh, you know, fantasy duology. So I definitely do want to pick that up. Then, of course, we have House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass. This is the third book in the Crescent City series. I love Sarah J. Mass. I love her writing, love her characters, love her world building. And with the way book two ended, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be reading book three. I cannot wait to read it. I am so excited. Today, I think it comes out in like 10 days. So. I'm stoked. And we have 112263 by Stephen King. I think this is a sci-fi book. I think there's like time travel involved. Um, but I heard about this um, because of Haley Pham over at her channel. She read it and absolutely loved it. And it's not her typical genre. So I figure, and you know, she reads a lot of the books that I read like fantasy, romance, things like that. So I figure if she really enjoyed it, then there's like a high chance that I will also like it. So I definitely want to pick that up. And my lovely sister in law Save got that for Christmas, actually. So I do own the physical book. But again, it's a thick boy. So I might read it on my Kindle, but definitely want to pick that up this year. Then we have Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is the first book in a trilogy. I don't remember the name of the trilogy. I think it's the Greenbone Saga. Um, 
but I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I will put it somewhere on the screen. But I heard really, really great things from Rachel Catherine and from Rachel over at Raven Hair Reader. She really, really loved it. Um, and I think it's just like a high fantasy series. So I definitely really want to check that out this year. We have Arch Enemies, which is the second book in the Renegades uh, trilogy. It's the YA um, sci-fi trilogy that I started this year and I really loved Renegades um, but Sarah Crowley and Rachel Catherine they both finished the trilogy this year and they didn't have the best things to say about the second and third book they didn't hate it like it was still good but it just wasn't as good as um, as the first one so it does make me just a wee bit nervous but I'm hoping that I will still have a good time and still enjoy it um, just because I did really love the characters and kind of the storyline in general and I'm very interested to see where the story goes from here. We have Heartless Sky by Carolyn Peckham and Susan Valenti. This is book seven in the Zodiac Academy series. I am super excited. I love Zodiac Academy as we all know. It was literally my number one series of last year and so I'm looking to finish it this year and I just had such a fun time. I love the drama. I really just live for the drama in that book like truly. It's messy. It's dramatic. It's magical. It's fantastical. And I'm here for all of it. I love it. There's like not one thing that I don't love about it. I mean, the bully romance is kind of a lot, but other than that, I absolutely loved it. And I can't wait to continue the series. Then we have Swordcatcher by Miss Cassie Clare. So this is her fantasy, her adult fantasy debut novel. It's like the first book in a series and knowing Cassandra Clare, it's maybe like a long series. Um, so I haven't heard the best things about it. I've heard it's just kind of meh. Um, you know, that she's like kind of obviously building up to things that it's not the greatest. But honestly, I like most things that Cassandra Clare writes. Her writing is just super easy to understand. And I tend to have a lot of fun in her books. So I definitely do still want to like give it a chance. So I am looking forward to reading that at some point this year. And we have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. So I love, 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 love Abby Jimenez's writing. Um, Yours truly was in my top books of last year. I just absolutely adored her writing style. Um, so I am very excited to continue reading her books. And this is a new release from her that comes out, I think in like April or May, I believe. Um, and I've heard really good reviews from people that have received arcs and things like that. So I do have high expectations um but usually her books are just more than just romance and I love that I love her writing she just is such a good author truly um so I am very excited to pick that up this year as well and then next up we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross so this took Instagram and book talk by storm last year it was like one of the most popular books like everybody talked about it I genuinely just never got around to reading it last year um but I do want to read it it does sound very very interesting the premise sounds interesting the romance kind of sounds interesting and I do like that it's um got letters in it I love 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 when there's letters in books I just find it just so endearing truly so I'm very excited to pick that up at some point this year as well Powerless by Lauren Roberts. So this is another, I think it's adult fantasy. Um, I've heard Sarah Crowley talk about it, uh, Rachel Catherine and Raven Hair Reader uh, Rachel talk about it. Um, Destiny Sidwell talked about it. I've heard many a booktuber discuss this book and for the majority they really enjoyed it. Um, it was Sarah's like one of her favorite books of the year um, so I'm definitely very excited to pick it up. She said that the banter and the romance was honestly just fantastic so that's kind of what I am looking forward to for sure. We have Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So this is a YA science fiction Again, I heard about it from Katie's reading and she really enjoyed it. I think she was looking forward to continuing the series this year. Um, I think so far there's like four books out and the covers, I love the covers. Um, so I'm very excited. I, again, just really wanted to dip my toe into some sci-fi and I figure YA sci-fi is probably a good bet and Brandon Sanderson also probably a pretty good bet. We have a funny story by Emily Henry. So this is her new release this year. I... I'm an Emily Henry girly, so I always buy her books when they come out. I always read them when they come out. 
and so I'm really looking forward to reading another one of her books. I can't wait. I wasn't the biggest fan of Happy Place, um, but I did, it was okay. I gave it like, I think like a three and a half. So definitely wasn't bad, um, but it wasn't Beach Read. So I am very excited though. Funny Stories premise sounds a little bit more interesting to me. So I'm very excited for that. A Darker Shade of Magic by B.E. Schwab. I started this series actually back in this early December, I think. Um, and I read like 60 pages of the first book but I loved what I read but I just wasn't in the mood for fantasy um I think I talked about it in like my holiday romance vlog but I could literally just pick up like quick easy rom-coms like I just couldn't get in the headspace for fantasy books um so I just like kind of did a soft dnf on it so I definitely want to pick that up this year for sure we have Mistborn I think the first book in the first era so there's two eras that are each a trilogy so I think in the first era I think the first book is called The Well of Ascension um it'll be up on the screen somewhere but people say that this is a really good way to kind of dip your toe into Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere that it's very easy to understand very easily written and then the magic system is really cool so I definitely cannot wait to pick this up I have had it kind of on my digital TBR um as just kind of something that like I really wanted to read for like the last I think year and a half or so um pretty much since I got introduced to the world of Brandon Sanderson and since like Katie and and Cass started talking about him. I definitely do want to pick that up this year. Then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. So I have not read any of TJ Klune's books, but I've heard that they're all really, really good and they all have like really deep meanings um, while still being kind of like just like a cozy fantasy. So The House in the Cerulean Sea, I think, is also getting a um, sequel this year so I definitely want to pick that up that way I can kind of dip my toe into his writing and then also at some point read the sequel but I just heard really really good things about all of his books and um recently Sarah Crowley read House in the Cerulean Sea and the premise of that one interests me the most I think out of all of them so I definitely um, want to read that at some point this year. Then we have Nightbane by Alex Astor so this is the second book in the Light Lark duology. I really enjoyed um Light Lark. I thought it was very fun quick easy fast paced I didn't have to use a lot of brain power when I read it I just was nice quick easy and I had a fun time so I definitely want to see how she wrapped everything up so I'm very interested to kind of pick up Nightbane just to kind of see how everything ends then we have um Murder in the Family. Um, she is a British, I think, slash like European author. And this book is actually her first um, American novel. And it is like full of mixed media. There's like newspaper clippings, um, sections from like podcasts and TV shows and police reports. And it looks just super cool. And again, I just kind of want to get back into like histories and thrillers. And the way this book I've seen described is that you are kind of trying to solve the murder of someone with the police. Um, so you're kind of getting everything that they got when they got it. And so I thought it was super cool. So very excited to pick that up this year. Then I want to read Killer Instincts, which is the second book in the Naturals series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have heard really good things that it just kind of gets better and better as the series goes on. I read The Naturals last year and I really enjoyed it. It is genuinely just like a YA criminal minds and it's a lot of fun. Um, and you get to follow kind of different characters, like the same core characters, but I guess each book centers around a different character. So I'm very excited to kind of see everything from like the different characters and kind of get more of their backstory um and like I said people just said that the books get better and better as you read them so I'm very excited to continue this series this year then we have Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling this is a fantasy romance there's dragons it's like enemies to lovers um or like forced rivals to like lovers or something um but there's dragons and i've heard a lot of people really rave about it and it's pretty good reviews on goodreads so you can't go wrong with that either so i definitely want to check this out this year as well then we have juniper bean resorts to murder so this is a book that uh bestie taylor actually recommended to me i was on facetime with her when she was reading it last year and she absolutely loved it she was laughing her butt off truly um having such a fun time 
and she has like always talked about this book she loves this author in general and so I'm very excited and when I went to San Diego last year she actually gifted me her copy so that way I could like annotate it when I read it and then send it back to her so that way she has like my annotations in the book and honestly I'm here for that so I'm very excited to pick that book up this year um I just think it's like supposed to be like a fun just like a funny like rom-com just around I think it's on like a cruise ship or something um so I'm excited about it down to the final three books you guys so next up we have Heartless by Elsie Silver this is the second book in the Chestnut Springs series so I have heard a lot of great things about Chestnut Springs. I started it last year. I really, really loved Flawless. And people say that Flawless is like their least favorite of the series. So I'm honestly just excited to keep reading it. Um, I really look forward to it and I can't wait to pick up Heartless. Then we have these last two are actually Dramione fan fictions. So the first one is Isolation by Bex Chan, um, which is, I think, a Deathly Hallows retelling. It's essentially if um, Draco, like, hides with Hermione and she has to, like, hide him in her room or something. I don't really know, but it, it has really good ratings. People in the fan fiction world absolutely love Isolation. They say it's like just really, really good between Draco and Hermione. Um, and we all know last year I was in my Dramione era, so I'm very excited to read some more. And then the other one is The Disappearances of Draco Malfoy by Speechwriter. Um, I did start to read this last year, um, end of, or middle of December. But the problem I was having was that as it is a Deathly Hallows retelling, I genuinely haven't read the books in like over a year and I haven't watched the last couple of movies anytime recently. So as things were happening in this book that happened in the original Harry Potter, I was like, yeah, I remember that happening. But like, why is like this thing happening? And like, so it was just, I just want to be like kind of refreshed. So I definitely want to finish my reread. I'm on book five at the moment um, of my Harry Potter reread. So I'm hoping that I will get to these two um, fan fictions at some point this year. I just love the fan fiction. I just, I can't get over how well these people write genuinely. Those are my 2024 goals and my 24 books that I want to read in 2024. Let's hope that I read them. And I'm actually looking forward to kind of doing a video next year where I kind of go over this video and see if I read any of the books I said I was going to read because we all know I'm a mood reader and I am like literally horrible at sticking to a TBR but I really need to truly. And these are all books that like I really really want to read so Here's hoping. Let me know down below what is a goal that you have for yourself in 2024 and what book are you most looking forward to reading because I definitely would love to know. I look forward to chatting with you down in the comments. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.